good. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. We're in church this morning. Good morning, church. It is great to be here this morning. We welcome you here in the sanctuary. We welcome you Facebook Live and Zoom. We're having a little technical difficulty. If you see that um, overhead is not coming up right now, but God is in our presence. Amen. His word says where the two and three are gathered in his name, he is in our midst. Are you gathered in my name this morning? I don't think you all like me that much. You gathered in any other worship team's name this morning? No, we got it in the name of the Lord this morning. So we are going to begin, and we're going to ask you to stand, please, as we approach the throne of grace. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we give you thanks. Father, you are so good to us. You woke us up this morning. You didn't have to. If we weren't awakened, if we had died in our sleep, we would have never known. We'd have just sleep away. But there was something you woke us up for this morning. There's a purpose you have for us. Something that we might not have finished. Something that we're still working on. Maybe we're still working on ourselves. We need to get to that point, God, where you are our focus. You are center point. So I pray that, God, if we're not there, that we get there. Because as we see that time is going so quickly, time is going so rapidly, and you are coming, but you're coming for prepared people. So we ask that God that as we're here in the sanctuary, we're lifting up our hands, we're clapping, we're giving you praise, and we're giving you honor, but God, our heart's right. Help us there, God. As we take a second or two, we ask your forgiveness there, God. The things we thought about, the things we said, the things we done, that were not pleasing to you, that sinned against you, Father, we ask your forgiveness. Because as we're here this morning, we don't want to worship you with dirty hands and a dirty heart. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth. We want to worship you freely. And we thank you for the freedom we have in you. Dear God, the song says, forget about ourselves and concentrate on him. Father, I pray that that's where our focus is today on you. We thank you for this opportunity to approach your throne. We thank you for those on Facebook Live. Thank you for those on Zoom because you are present with them also. You're omnipresent. We, we put you in a little box and we said we, we have to be in a sanctuary. No, God, you're here then. You're everywhere. You left and you, when Jesus left, he left the Holy Spirit with us because the Holy Spirit can be everywhere. Jesus couldn't be but in one place at a time. But Holy Spirit, we thank you for being with us. We thank you for being in our sanctuary, online, in every church that lifts up the name of Jesus. And we ask that God, your anointing on our service today. We ask our anointing on the person bringing your word this morning. We thank you for every person that is willing to do and say something for your honor, your glory. We thank you for the, mus the musicians. We ask you there, God, to bless them, anoint them. We thank you for the tech team. As we look up, we see our tech team growing. And we thank you, Lord. And I pray that, God, that as the problems arise, that you will just take them away. Take them away. But we don't need the technology in order to get into your presence. So we thank you there, God, that we're in your presence. We ask for those who are coming that you bring them safely, and we just worship and adore you. We are going to worship you there, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So our first chorus is come. Now is the time to worship. Is there a better time than the time that you're in your life, you're well, you're breathing? This is a time you can actually sing. There, there might come a time your speech might be taken away. You might not have the strength to say anything. And now is the time to worship. My left hand is hurting, but I'm going to raise it to God. Raise your hand. If you're worshiping God, you raise your hand. You do whatever you have to do to say, thank you, God. I have a hand to raise. I have an arm to raise. And I can feel, I can even feel the pain. You gave us so much, but God, you don't want us to be, you know, hurting. But we know you can take away the pain. We know you can heal and you can deliver. So come, now is the time to worship. 
Hallelujah. Don't put it off. Don't put it off. We used to say here today, gone tomorrow. We can say here today, gone today. Or in the next few minutes, don't put it off. So let's glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. Hallelujah.
to the king of kings hallelujah hallelujah and as the day panted you know when you're thirsty yesterday was a hot day and i drank the most water i've drank in a long time yesterday and just like we were looking for that something to quench your thirst we should be looking for the lord we should be thirsting after righteousness we should be thirsting and hungering after him and his word so we're going to sing as the deer panted <laughs>
Hallelujah. Verse 3 says, you're my friend and you are my brother, even though you are a king. So that's my brother. That's royalty. Brother Arnold knows we're royalty. Sister Pam knows she has on purple. Sister Paxson, that's the colors of royalty. So can you imagine your brother being the king of kings and the lord of lords? That's where we are today. That's where we are. So Sister Peters is rejoicing. I can see it because we have a brother, a friend, who is our King of Kings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We call on Pastor Luke to pray for us, but we're going to sing, Have Thine Own Way. Sometimes, a lot of times, we want things our way. It's all about me. <clears throat> But we want God to have his way with us. Sister Bonnie sings, mold me when you go to the potter's house. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. So it's just giving God permission, which you don't really need permission if you don't want, because he's God. But we, we are, you know, telling God we agree that mold me, make me after your will. Have thine own way, Lord. After which we ask Pastor Luke to pray for us.
praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I sense today is a time of really recommitting ourselves to the Lord, asking Him to, of course, have His own way. And that's what life ought to be, Christ having His own way in our lives. And so today we give Him thanks and praise of His great love towards us. And we just really want to humble ourselves before Him. Because outside of him, there is no life and there is no meaning to life. But we are thankful today that we can just give, in, give him ourselves. Just as the old song we used to sing so often, I give myself away so you can use me. That the Lord will have his way. You know, we are human beings. Sometimes we love to have our own way. But we should not be afraid to say, Lord, take all of me. Do whatever you want to do with me, Lord. It may not be pleasant, but God, when you give him the opportunity to have his way in your life, you will not regret it. Father, this morning, we thank you and praise you. We thank you so much, Lord, that you sacrificed your own life in our place. You died so that we could have life. And because not having you means we don't have life. Because there's no life outside of you. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And so God, we thank you this morning for your goodness towards us. For your mercies, oh God. New every morning, great is thy faithfulness. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your manifold blessings, oh Lord. To arise this morning, the seed of sunlight, oh God, to arise this morning and realize, it, yes, the favors and grace of God is new every morning. Father, Lord, we just bring ourselves to you. We, we, we just re, re, rededicate ourselves to you, as it were. Help us, oh God, that these, these are really trying times. These are days when, when we know it, it signifies that your coming even is joined even closer, Lord, and we ourselves need to be closer drawn to you. So we indeed help us to draw near to you, as the word said, draw near to me, to me, and I will draw near to you. So God, draw us near and help us to draw nearer to you, as the word indicates. We ask that you remember those who are in any way struggling this morning. Those, oh God, who have lost loved ones. Those, oh God, who are struggling with some form of illness. God, we know that time will come when, uh, as the songwriter said, it will soon be done with trouble and trials that time will soon come when there'll be no more sorrow no more crying no more death that will indeed flee away so we pray that you'll give comfort and consolation to those who are struggling this morning there are those who have issues and challenges that seem so insurmountable but god i pray you'll mind each of us today that there is nothing too hard for god to do and to remind us, even as our Sunday school lessons, uh, lesson remind us today, oh God, that faith without works is dead faith. So help us to put our faith in you. Even when things look topsy-turvy, God, we can still trust you. Even when life seems so dark, there is no way out. We must still trust you. Even when it seems like the waves of the sea keep beating upon us day after day, we must still trust you. And continue, oh God, to, to labor, dear God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you. My God, sometimes it seems as though the trials will never end. But God, you remind us to be faithful even unto death. And you'll give us a crown of life. We want to stand firm in the armor of God today. We want to stand firm knowing in whom we have believed. And stand firm being confident that he that has begun a good work in us will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Bless us with your peace as you promised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Luke. And you may be seated. Yes. <laughs> You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning again, church. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Faith Wesleyan Holiness Church. I welcome you on behalf of Pastor Leroy Luke. On my left, you just heard him pray. First Lady Luke, 
On my right, Dr. Don Pond stepped out for a minute, Brother Pond, the local board of administration, and the whole body here at Faith. I welcome you here in the sanctuary, and if you're on Facebook Live or Zoom, welcome, welcome, welcome. On my left, um, I'll start with my left, and we're gonna go through this kind of quickly this morning, but I see the little ones for Brother Ralph here this morning. Let's give them a little hand. They're here, the little ones, the smallest of the grands. Uh, middle section, I think everybody was here the last week or the week before. Middle section, no long time ago. You haven't been out for a while. It's good to see the faces. On my right, I know um, Sister Pam has been out for a while. And we, we have more than one Pam, so Sister Pam has been out for a little bit and she's back and we could just tell her good morning i don't know if she wants to say a word but she's just she's just happy to be here i'll speak for her um jeffers i saw you last week but i was upstairs i didn't remember hearing a welcome but it's always good to see you we thank god for you and that you're here right behind jeffers there's a lady i'm not sure i recognize you um ma'am is this the first time being here with us who is that? Sister. No, I, I can't see who. She was here last week. Okay, I was upstairs, so I wasn't able to, to see. But welcome back. It's good to have you back. And let me, let me just hear your name, please, so we could know for the next time. Your name? Good morning, church. My name is Tessa Jeffers. Oh, his wife. I was upstairs. Yes. Welcome, Mrs. Jeffers. Good to have you, Mrs. Jeffers. See, I'm not the only one didn't know. Everybody was here last week. Good. Oh, I couldn't hear everything upstairs. You know, I, I, I was teching last week, so I was like, yeah. Okay, well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I trust you're enjoying yourself. We welcome you upstairs in the tech booth as well. God is good. We're now going to call on our dear brother, Charles Dorr. Oh. And he's going to bring us the men's minute this morning. Please welcome brother Dorr as he comes. Good morning, good morning. My minutes today, I was in my weekly reading, I came across it. Allow me to share it with you. Bring me the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Take nothing for granted, not even the rising of the sun. Before Satan tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden, thankfulness was as natural as breathing. Satan temptation involved pointing Eve to the one thing that was forbidding her. The garden was filled with many desirable fruits, but Eve focused on the one fruit she could not have, rather than being thankful for the many good things freely available. This negative focus darkened her mind and she succumbed to temptation. When you focus on what you don't have or on situation that display you, your mind always become darkened. You take for granted life, salvation, sunshine, flowers, and countless other gifts from me. You look for what is wrong and refuse to enjoy life until that is fixed. When you approach me with thanksgiving, the light of my present pour onto you, transforming you true and true. Walk in the light with me by practicing and displaying of my thanksgiving. Bring me the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Dor. And I have just a quick, um, I guess, um, question. True or false? 
um, the devil tempted Adam, and it, it's part of Brother Doors um, Men's Minute. Tempted Eve. Okay, so that I, I only said that too because when he said it, I realized and Nikaya had it on Friday night and one of our, of our questions, and I got it wrong because I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, she warned us. She said, "Read the question properly." The question was that the devil tempted Eve, and I was like, "Yes." true and she was like false so i was wrong because i didn't read and yeah we have some sisters that didn't read as well <laughs> praise the lord we are now going to bless the lord with our tithes and offering woo, woo. this is a great time you give and god gives back to you good measure press down shaking together and running over um sister reba can you pass the mic to sister Henry and Sister Henry, please bless the offering. Praise the Lord. Father, it's an honor and a privilege just to give back a portion of what you have blessed us with. Father, we are seeing you in the name of Jesus that you continue to bless us. Use this offering to build up your kingdom and to tear down Satan's stronghold. We ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We are going to sing satisfied. Are you satisfied with the life you live in? Are you satisfied in Christ? Are you satisfied serving Christ? Is Christ your all in all?
just celebrated Resurrection Sunday, which every day should be Resurrection Sunday. But I am glad that Jesus saved me and that I am saved. Amen. Well, before we call on Pastor Luke to give this morning's message to tell us what God laid on his heart, we're going to have a selection by Sister Bonnie Bass and Company. The worship team. <laughs> Sister Bonnie Bass and Company. <laughs> Amen. Good morning, church. <laughs> With Sinus dripping this morning, I'm going to try to sing the song. <clears throat> I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God your voice you have led me through the fire in darkness night you are close like no other I know you as a father I know you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God, oh, and I'm
to you, please stand and give God a rousing round of applause. If he has been good to you, hallelujah. If you're able to stand, if you're able to stand, hallelujah. If he has been faithful, hallelujah. oh yes he has. And all my life he has been so, so is good he has been good he will be good hallelujah you may be seated we'll now call on pastor luke and pastor luke will lead the service from here on in praise the lord have a blessed week everyone praise the lord thank you thank you worship team Thank you, musician and the tech team. Thank you so much this morning. Praise the Lord. I sometimes forget that we are on Zoom and Facebook and that there are those who are constantly, who look forward to joining us on Sundays. Uh, Sister, Sister Christopher, Sister Peters, Sister Gertrude Peters, and I'm sure others who join us Sundays and so this morning we want to greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Sister Otto as well I'm told is online we thank you for tuning in and pray God continued blessing upon each of you. Praise the Lord. God is good all the time. You may have to pay closer attention this morning as I intend to bring you as Sister Brown says what the Lord has laid upon my heart. I'm not able to probably scream this morning as I'm accustomed to. Uh, what have you? Maybe the Lord is humbling me in a different way. So please pay close attention to what I'm about to say to you. I'm going to say something to you first that is really not the message, but it's things that we need to know, especially in times like these. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we just pray and ask that you would give us a still spirit that we'll be still and know that you are God, that we'll pay close attention to your word, and then, oh God, not only be hearers of your word, but to be doers of, your, of the same. Bless us today through your word, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us that when God created the sun, the moon, and the stars, and he placed them in the heavens, they were for signs and seasons, days and years. So they were for signs, right? Signs. And the Bible tells us when we see certain things begin to happen, what are we supposed to do? Look up. Why? For our redemption joy near. You know, sometimes it seems as though Christians today, many of us forget that we're not going to live here forever. 
not in its current state. The very America that you live in is going to change. As a matter of fact, it has changed and will continue to change. It could change for the better and it could change for the worse. Right now it has changed for the worse. However, with God, all things are possible. But God gives us signs. I was reading this morning. I had to go back again and read uh, the book of Jonah. Jonah. Because God, as I said, always sends warning before judgment. And he had appeared to Jonah and said to Jonah, Jonah, go down to Nineveh and preach. Because Nineveh's sin had reached up to heaven. You see, God is like this. He gives time, right? He gives time, time and time again. But it comes a certain time. We don't realize God has a cutoff period. You don't think so? The Bible said, to everything under the sun is a season. Is a time when God allows certain things. Some people don't say, how is it that God, they blame God for everything. God allows so and so and so and so. Yes, in a way, God, he is merciful. Why? Because he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so Jonah, and I usually this, I know this may not be something that is nice to say, but I usually see myself as a Jonah. I do. Because when God called Jonah and sent him to Nineveh, Jonah already tell, told God um, back there when the word came to him, no, I ain't going. Because if I go and preach, you are so merciful, you are going to forgive them. And I don't want to waste my time. Just do what you have to do and leave me out of it. That was Job's, jo, Jonah's attitude. You may not want to believe it, but it was. He was the reluctant preacher. And so he decided, you know what? Why God want me to go down there? Let me jump in there. I don't know how sometimes preacher and people can be so silly. As to think that you can run away from God. As to think, Brother Peter, he can get into a boat and go someplace else where God can't find him. Crazy. How silly can you get? And so he jumped into that ship and he was on his way down to Tarshish, isn't it? But God threw a spoke in his wheel. God can choose the wind. <laughs> can choose all the element. The fish of the sea and all that there in this. So God just caused a strong wind to blow. And so as much as they were struggling, you know, sometimes it's that, that way with many of us. We don't want to go God's way. And yet the wind gets so boisterous trying to get us into the right path and we resist God all the time. And so Jonah for a while resisted because the, the ship was now being tossed to and fro in the wind. And those who were on the ship with Jonah knew very well that something was wrong. They were serving other gods, but they just knew that there was something wrong. They made that trip all the time, but only since we pick up that Christian preacher that something is happening to us like this. If something must be wrong. And so they gathered together, they cast lot, and they felt that the well, the lot fell on, on Jonah. <laughs> and Jonah had to admit, your problem is because of me. Well, what do we do with you, Jonah? And these men were, didn't really want to do anything negative with Jonah. So they continued to row. But the wind got even worse. And Jonah finally said, listen, throw me overboard, buddy. I am the one that is the cause of your problem. And so they did, but God had already prepared a submarine. <laughs> You know, God, God, God has a sense of humor, you know. <laughs> when he thinks he, he doesn't want to go on a boat, all right. 
I got a submarine for you. And so they threw him overboard and God's kind of submarine in the form of a fish picked him up and he was in that belly of the whale, which is also a sign, as Jesus said, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights, so also shall the Son of Man be in the earth three days and three nights. But to make a long story short, Jonah was finally um, um, vomit out on the beach. <laughs> you know, when I was reading, the, the, the Bible says that Nineveh was three days journey. But after Jonah's experience, he got there in a day and a half or in one day. After his experience in that whale, he got there in one day. And Jonah preached a very, um, how should I say, a very forceful message. He said to the people in Nineveh, Nineveh, within 40 days, am I correct, sister, upon help me? Within 40 days, right? The whole of Nineveh shall be, what? Shall be destroyed. Now, that's not a positive message by any account. It's not positive. And a lot of people don't want to hear these kind of messages because they're not positive. But God don't really deal with electricity. He's not only electrician. He doesn't deal with negative and positive. He deals with truth. And so, Jonah preached that message. Listen, I, I, I'm sure he had a very angry spirit. I don't know if he stammered or what have you, but the message was within 40 days, God is going to kill every one of you. I'm going to destroy everything. The same God I serve today. He hasn't changed. He is merciful and compassionate, but he's also a God of judgment. And when he judges, he's just. And so at the request, at the hearing of Jonah's message, all of Nineveh repented from the least, from the least to the greatest, or from the greatest to the least because the, the king himself uh, threw off his robe. He put aside his pride and he humbled himself before God in sackcloth and ashes and asked his people to do the same. Now I want to tell you something. If you have a wicked leader, expect wickedness in your country. Because God really deals with the leadership. Because the leaders are the ones who have the responsibility to lead people in the right way. So if your leader is corrupt, what else do you expect? If you're evil, if your leader supports evil, what else can you expect? We, we want to pretend, oh, well, we have corrupt leaders and we can expect better things. No. But this man, being a king, he understood that there was a greater God, that, that God was great and that God could do whatever. And so uh, the king humbled himself, took his royal robe off, and he put on sackcloth and ashes. And you know what God did? God changed his mind. Oh, what a God we serve. What a God we served. Jonah was angry, angry because it's not what Jonah expected to see. Get rid of them, God. <laughs> I don't know why Jonah was that way. Oh, he said, well, he was upset because God was merciful. Hmm. And yet, God had a, the place got really hot after God speared Nineveh. And he gave Jonah like a gourd, uh, something that sprang up overnight and provide shade for him. And what God did afterwards, he used a worm to destroy the gourd. And Jonah was even more angry. God said, you have a right to be angry. Eh? You have a reason to be angry. Mm, you, didn't do, you did not create the gourd. You did not create the worm. I create them. I create the God and I can kill the God if I want to. I can save it if I want to. Jonah, angry and bitter. And you know, I, I would tell you, see, sometimes you got to understand God is, God can deal with all of our emotions. 
Sometimes we don't think so. But God understands. He understands even when we are frustrated and, and don't quite understand how things, uh, you know, how, how, why things should be the way they are. But as we see, it's God's heart and God's mercies. Because when I read in the passage that God said to, jo to Jonah, listen, you are angry over a gourd. And you expect me to destroy over 60,000 people. I said, God, you're really merciful. God is merciful. Because as you can see in the opening verse, if you were to check it out, the, the time had come up to God. It was time for God to act on their sins because sin can't continue forever. And so God was about to act. But before he did, he was going to send his man down there to warn them, to tell them, listen, God, I don't, God don't want to do it. It, now it's going to be up to you. If you will turn from your ways, evil ways and turn back to me, I will spare you. Thank God they took heed to the warning and Nineveh was spared. What am I saying to you this morning? Tomorrow is a very significant time perhaps in the history of America and in the world. Tomorrow, which is the 8th of April, there will be a solar eclipse, right? They tell me it will crisscross America like this. A user X. Now, when you go on YouTube, you hear everybody have an opinion. Really don't care about opinions in that sense. What I care about is the fact that God put signs in the heavens. And they're there as... as as a way to remind us as to the fact that, of course, he's coming again. And that as God, he's, he, he can take, uh, 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 he can do what he pleases when he pleases, but he always sends someone to bring warning. Someone to bring warning. We do not know what this really means. It could mean that in some time in the future that the country we once knew will not exist in the same way. We don't know. What we do know as individuals, even when God sends warning your way, you need to pay attention. They tell me that, that this eclipse, of course, crosses the other one. The one we had when? 2017? So this one completely crosses it and makes an X. But they also say that X touches seven cities with the name Nineveh. Now, I don't really believe in coincidences, you know. God still speaks. And perhaps that's a warning because this country, whether you want to accept it or not, has gone off the rails. We have gone off the moral rails. But as Christians, we are the ones who are called upon to be the light of the world. We cannot compromise the truth of the gospel. As a matter of fact, the nations that we, the nation that we live in will either rise or fall based on how we live. If somebody said, the church will survive without America, but America cannot survive without the church. The world will not survive without Israel, but Israel will survive without the world. I will stand with Israel regardless to if the whole world forsake that nation. You know why? Because if God is standing with Israel, Israel has the majority on its side. Because with God on our side, we have the majority. America the other day, of course, you heard uh, Mr. Chuck Schumer, who is the, 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 um, the majority leader in the Senate, was calling for, in a way, the, 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 um, the overthrow of an elected leader in Israel. That's how these people are. Imagine me calling for the overthrow of the government here and now because you feel that the election was stolen. Ah, uh, no. 
It's not the way to go. These people was duly elected by the people in Israel. But the problem I will tell you, see, you got to remember church, God's promises are what? Yes and amen. When God set out to bless Abraham, it was forever. I will bless them that bless you and I will curse them that curse you. Whenever we turn, listen, God never asked the church to pray for the peace of Fran, of um, Washington or, or London or what have you. But we're told to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Sometimes you wonder why do these people hate the people of Jerusalem the way they do? Why do they hate the Jews the way they do? The truth is, they hate the people of God because they hate God. The United Nations, they hate God. And God knew this already. God knew this already. But I will tell anybody, I'm going to conclude this in a minute. I'm going to tell you as a church today. You got to pay close attention to what's happening around you. You can't be blind to the things that God is revealing, especially when it comes to the Middle East and Israel. And notice that even when the time comes when the whole world would be gathered against Israel, God will stand up for his people. God will stand up for his people. Don't be fooled. Be wise in the word of God and understand when God chooses a people, he fights for his people. And just as he fights for the people of Israel, the Jewish people, the same way he will fight for you as a child of God. God keeps his word. I don't need to worry about my survival because in life or in death, I am taken care of. Let me say it again. I don't need to worry about my survival because in life or in death, God will take care of me. God will take care of me. Is it, I don't know if the time is right. Is it 2 o'clock now or 1.30? Okay, I guess I'm seeing the long hand as the shorter. Let me check my time. Okay, okay. It's only 12.10. <laughs> it's only 12.10. But I want you to bear in mind and pay attention to things that are happening in the world. A few days ago, we wake up to hear that a ship, a cargo ship, cargo vessel, ran into a bridge in Washington area. Am I correct? Of Baltimore, right? And you know, as I listened and watched on the news, it came to my mind. I don't, there's some things, you know, I really don't think about. But what came to my mind, that bridge is called the Francis Scott Key Bridge. You know who was Francis Scott Key? The gentleman who wrote the Star Spangled Banner. God has a way of speaking and, and sometimes we're not listening because we just believe in coincidences. God said, no, I, I'm trying to send you a message. Your nation may be in danger or in danger and it's time not just for us to come out to church and have church as usual. It's time for us to recognize our responsibility in the body of Christ, not only to live right but to share the gospel. Because God is about to act. A few days later, I think yesterday, the day before, New York shook with a 4.8 earthquake. And though it didn't cause any major damage, many people were afraid. Hmm. I don't want to expose my friend online, really, but <laughs> when you're in those high rises in the state <laughs> and the earth begins to shake under you, you, you have to be really, your faith has to be really on solid ground. 
<laughs> I don't know what's next. Maybe God will tell me some other time. I don't know. But I do know that because he's merciful, he sends warning before judgment. But he also prepares his people. Jesus told his disciples, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, listen, I will come again. I know people aren't looking for that because somehow we become so comfortable on planet earth. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to get out of the comfort zone. And recognize that Christ is returning and he could come at any time. You may not understand this. He's going to come for his church in the rapture and then he comes with his church after the tribulation. That's what the Bible says. At the end of the tribulation in the, of those days shall the son of man appear after the tribulation. But before the tribulation, God comes for his church. Those who die in him and those who are alive in him. The Bible said they will be caught up to meet the Lord where? In the air. And so shall you ever be with the Lord. That's the rapture of the church. There are those who teach in contrary. But this is what I personally believe that the scripture teaches. But we need to be ready because we do not know that day or that hour. We know when he'll, he's going to return to rule. Because that happens after the, after the tribulation. But prior to the tribulation, we don't know how, when, how soon he will appear to take his bride to his father's house. We want to be ready, church. We want to be ready. But I was reading Psalm 37 yesterday. Are they before? And I, and I was really blessed by the word of David. And so I thought of a message to share with us this morning. It's called a well-balanced diet for a well-balanced life. And Brother Sam, the kid, you all bring up Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Where the Bible says what? Fret not thyself. All right. Well balanced life. We've all heard this. We, all, we have all heard that some things aren't good for our health. And we have to agree that some things just aren't. That certain foods could contribute to our, earthly, to our early demise. As such, these foods must be taken in moderation or removed from our diet. It is also true that sometimes we do not know whose research to trust on these matters. For example, sometimes we are told that some things are good to be included in our diet, while at other times they are harmful to our diet. Today, when it comes to a well-balanced life, we can trust the diet which God has prescribed in Psalm 37. Psalm 37 contains a long list of what I refer to as, an, as the ingredients to a well-balanced life. And I want to make it quick and simple. The first of these is from verse 1. What does it say? Fret not. Fret not. In spite of all that is happening to us or we, we see happening around us, fret not. That word fret really means to what? worry fret not in other words stop worrying the bible said fret not thyself because of evil doors neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity for they shall what soon be cut down and wither as the green herb Yes, Lord, I'm concerned about the direction that our leaders are taking us into. But they shall soon be cut down and wither as the green grass. Mm -hmm. The dictators of the world who seem to think that they can do anything, anytime, and nobody can stop them. They will soon be cut down and wither as the green herb. 
There were others before the current day dictators, and they're not here. Mussolini is not here. They, they ripped him to pieces and hang, they, they, they killed him and then hang him up upside down, I think, in Italy for his crimes against his people. And even against the people of Africa, they strung him up. Adolf Hitler, after murdering six million Jews, probably thought he was going to live forever. No, he blew his own brains out. Be not envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down and wither as the green herb. It is wise for us to remember there are limits, that there is a limit to everything, including the actions of evildoers and the workers of iniquity. You know, sometimes people think, oh, well, you know, Christians are supposed to be nice and you know they take advantage and uh, they you know really give you a hard time i don't know if any of one of you have experienced hard time from some unreasonable people and they think they're doing you they think they're doing you evil but god will always stand up for his people always will god will always stand up for his people they shall soon be cut down and wither as the green herb you know, sometimes it seems like God's soon is not soon enough. Sometimes, I remember reading in the book of Revelation, you know, studies, Brother Peters and Sister Peters and others, where the, the souls under the altar in the time of tribulation were saying to God, God, how long? How long do you not uh, judge those that dwell on the earth? Those who have behead us and those who have treated us so badly. And they were crying out to God for justice. And you know what God tell them? Wait a little while. Others are going to be killed like you. They're going to have the head cut off like yours. I don't know, maybe Pastor Luke is one of them. And I'm going to have to wait until his head is removed. So you take it easy right now. Be patient. Leaders of the world, be patient. Yes, people of the world, be patient. Christians, be patient. Evil doers will eventually be cut off. God is going to take matters into his own hands. Mm. So it seems that like God soon is not soon enough. However, we need to keep in mind, God's timing is always perfect. Evil doers will be dealt with by God in his way and in his time. So stop worrying. Remember that worry never changed anything. See, I'm speaking to you and I'm speaking to myself. Worries never change anything. As a matter of fact, it only makes matters worse. One of the first poems I learned after I got saved in Barbados was, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to know the difference. I tell you, as children of God, listen, there are things that as much as we want to change them, we can't. But thanks be to God, we can always pray and seek the Lord and live by faith and trust in God, even though things seem dark. We may not be able to change people's behavior, but we can work on ourselves. The people at the workplace may give you hells and you can't change them. You may wonder why people have to be so evil. Sometimes even in your own family, you wonder. You may not be able to change them, but work on yourself. Because for them, God will deal with them in his time. In his time. Jesus says, why worry? Matthew 6.25 to 34 says, why take ye thought for tomorrow? Let tomorrow take thought for the things of it. So don't worry. I got you covered. I will feed you. I will clothe you. I will take care of you. There is no need for you to worry. To worry. Let me ask you. Do you ever worry? At least we got a few in, um, honest people. <laughs> 
And once you can admit that, then you can change that. And that includes me. There are things in our lives that we need to work on. And if worry is one of them, now is the time to start changing. Start working on that. Then the Bible says, trust in the Lord and do good. good will God will preserve you. So shall thou dwell in the land. That speaks of preserving. You trust in the Lord and do good. The psalm says, so shall thou dwell in the land. God will sustain you. And notice the next verse, the next word in there. He says, and verily thou shall be fed. So he says, I'm going to sustain you, keep you, and I'm going to feed you. That's God's promise. No matter what life throws at us, we can be confident in knowing God will take care of you. God will take care of me. As the songwriter says, through every day, <clears throat> all of the way, he will, he will take care of you. That's the confidence we have as children of God. So I'm saying to us this morning, let us all stop worrying, irregardless to what the news is saying, irregardless to what the politics are, are you're seeing. We don't need to worry. Our trust is in the living God. And worry, in my mind, truly does not represent God in the right way. Because if God is in charge and is able to do exploits and to do, and above all we can ask or think, then what is my problem? What is your problem? Trust God even when we can't trace him. So we stop worry. We are to trust in the Lord and do good. And then we are to what? Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. To delight is to have a high degree of gratification or pleasure. It also implies extreme satisfaction. I am extremely satisfied with my commitment to God or with, with serving God. He takes good care of me. He's meaningful to me. He is all my life. I am happy in serving him. I'm happy. Can we really say that we take great pleasure in God? Do we have a high degree of gratification and joy for him and in him? If we want to have our heart's desires, then we must first do what? Delight ourselves in the Lord. You know, it, it's just so easy for, for people to minister to you if you take if you take pleasure in them, if you show them you appreciate them, right? Oh, church, you gone home with me? When you appreciate people and are thankful, right? They will want to do more for you. You get excited about them. You're not, you're not really... Uh, um, I'm doing things to them because you want to get something from them. You're doing it because you love them. And you appreciate them. And it's the same thing with God. He says when we delight ourselves in him, he gives us what? The desires of our heart. What is it that you desire this morning? You desire peace, right? I desire peace. I desire peace of mind. Listen, you can give me all the money in the world and probably I'll take it. <laughs> but I want to have peace of mind. I want to have peace with my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I want to have peace and God's peace because his peace passes all understanding. I want that. And he will give me the desires of my heart. And guess what? Even if my desire includes uh, you can think about what your desires may include at this time. <laughs> Dr. Pond, their desire may include a brand new car for this year. You think God have a problem with that? It may be this year that that house you've been waiting on for so long, 
that God bring it to pass. Huh? But he said, delight yourself in me and I will give thee. You see, God knows we have desires too, doesn't he? He knows we have desires. But he says to delight in me first and I'll give you the desires of your heart. Nothing in this life should be compared to the joy we have in Christ. Some people can spend all day telling you about themselves and their accomplishments, yet take no delight in God and what he has done. Today, let us delight ourselves in the Lord and allow him to give us the desires of our heart. The word tells us, trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean out unto thine own understanding in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path then fourthly commit thy way unto the lord commit means to put into trust or put in charge of put god in charge of our ways <laughs> put him in charge of our lives this suggests the need to put god in charge of all our ways and to trust him with the outcome whatever they may be when you trust in God and you, you put God in charge, then regardless to the outcome, you will still trust him. You see, we may put God in charge, but sometimes we may not like the outcome. But you know what the Bible says? All things work together for good. To them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose so even when things in your mind and my mind doesn't work out the way we want it to work out all things will still work together for good because God has a plan and he has a purpose listen even if you lose your job tomorrow thinking I'll have it for eternity God's plan and purpose will work for you You think God, no, I can't lose my job. God, no, I can't lose the house. No, I can't lose. Listen, God is big enough to handle anything. Anything, any situation is nothing too hard for him to do. Hmm? We commit our way to the Lord. Put him in charge. Put him in charge of your today. Put him in charge of your tomorrow. Put him in charge of every situation that may confront you. Put them in charge. You know, people don't normally commit to those they don't trust. The same is true when it comes to God. You will only commit to him if you really trust him. Let me say this to us and listen carefully. God can be trusted. Is there an amen? God can be trusted. As such, we should have no reservations about committing ourselves to him. Our ways, our issues can all be given to him because there is nothing too hard for God to do. Bible says, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment, what? As the noonday, when we commit our ways to God, he will make everything as clear as day, no matter the problem. God will vindicate you. So delight yourself in the Lord, find satisfaction in him, commit to him, take pleasure in him. God will make a way where there is no way. No way. I think it's too hard for him. Shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. He said, listen, when you commit to me, I will make everything like the midday sun. He's trying, to, that's the, the, um, the term to say, well, I'm going to make it all plain. I'm going to make it clear. And you're going to understand. But first, you got to commit. You got to stop worry. You got to, um, what's the next one? You got to trust in the Lord. You got to delight yourself in me. And you got to commit your way unto the Lord. Oh, that God will help us today. And you know, the last one I want to share with us today is the, the, the word that says, rest in the Lord. 
rest. Wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospered in his way. Because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Rest. I think young people will say to us today, even my daughter would say, Shari, stop stressing. Daddy, stop stressing. <laughs> she would be laughing and she's listening now. Wait patiently. Psalm 37, 7. God will not disappoint. God always have his children's best interest at heart. Rest in his word. All things work together for good to them that love God. To those who are called and call into his purpose. Romans 8, 28. There is purpose in your pain. Hmm? There is purpose even in your pain. There is purpose even in your sorrow. There is purpose even when your, your, your plans may fall apart. Because God is so great that he takes, he takes the evil and he turns it into good. You remember, Dave, remember Joseph? Even when his brothers tried to kill him, <laughs> tried to put out his light, threw him in a pit, sold him as a slave, the time came when they stood before him in sorrow and remorse. Joseph looked at them and said, boys, <laughs> I still love you, you know. You meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. God, what good is in that? I went to jail. I went to prison being accused of as being a rapist. And I was in jail with criminals. And you call that. Dr. Pond, thank you. Thank you. God meant it for good. And guess what, you know, the good wasn't only for Joseph, you know. The good was for all his whole 70 members, uh, 69 members of his family. God was saving his people just as he had promised. It would have been just easy for, jo for Joseph to decide, you know something, I'm moving down to, I'm moving down to Egypt. But no, he brought a child to kill him. Had him they had him accused of raping the king, the, 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 his, his boss, his wife. Could you imagine? And then they throw him in jail. The man with the plan. And you see, all those are written for our learning. So when we look at them, we can say, listen, God, even when they mean it for my evil, you meant it for good. God is good, so nothing, nothing that is bad affects his goodness. Even when things seem bad, God is still good. Rest in the Lord. Listen, if God be for us, I'm going to conclude right now, so don't get scared. If God be for us, who can be against us? Go home and read Romans 8, 31 to 39. Hmm? Rest in his ways. God is good. Rest in his ways. God is faithful. Rest in his ways. God is merciful. God is long-suffering. And he does all things well. Rest in his promises. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. Amen, says Matthew 28 and verse 20. Let not your heart be troubled. John 14, 1 to 3. The songwriter says, all the way my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt his tender mercies? Whom through life has been my guide. Heavenly peace, divinest comfort. Here by faith to him, on him to dwell. For I know whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. Let me just take the time to tell you, stop worrying. Pastor Lou, stop worrying. Stop stressing. Church members, stop worrying. Start, uh, stop stressing. Start trusting. Hmm? Start trusting. Start delighting. Start committing. And then finally, as the, as the word says, rest in the Lord. Just like you go to bed at night, if your bed, if you don't have one of them, old time bed, they're going to fall apart. So, Brown, I don't know if you have one of those. <laughs> I know some pro have provided a good bed for Sister Brown. <laughs> So when she's tired from work, she can just jump in and rest, knowing that it's not going to fall down under her. 
that's my simple way of telling you what rest means, okay? Just lie down and rest. Put the pillow and relax in God. God will take care of you. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you so much, Lord. We thank you. You reminded us, Lord, that we need not, we need not fret ourselves or worry. Remind us that we needed to trust in you, that we need to delight ourselves in you, that we need to commit our way to you. And finally, we need to rest in you and wait patiently. Because God, simply put, God will come through for you. Thank you for your word today. Thank you for your people. Thank you for blessing us because we are already blessed. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All the way my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can I doubt to stand the mercy? Whom for life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divine is comfort. Here by faith in him to dwell. For I know whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. Praise the Lord. At this time, we're going to have Sister Jennings to give us the announcements for the week. Good afternoon, church. Okay, at the count of three, one, two, three, in God's timing, for my good, for his glory. Uh, we, for the verse of the month, uh, we choose a youth every month to bring that verse. This month, it will be Josiah Harley. So Josiah, come up to read the verse of the month, please. Good afternoon, church. Let us say the memory verse together. We will say the reference verse. After two, one, two. Galatians 3, verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Okay, Faith Wesley and Holiness Church announcements for the week of April 7, 2024 are as follows. Weekly prayer, tomorrow Monday, prayers that avail it Monday 6 p.m. on Zoom. Midweek prayer meeting and Bible study in the sanctuary at 6 p.m. Thursday morning, Bible study and combat training, 10 a.m. to 11.30 in the sanctuary. Study to show thyself approved unto God. St. Thomas, Virgin Islands, Wesleyan District meets every Friday, 7 p.m. on Zoom. Saturday rehearsals, worship ministers and musicians, you meet at 5 p.m. Next Sunday, Sunday school lesson, Sunday, April 14, 2024. The topic will be the power to bless. Lesson focus, we must use the power of speech to do good rather than harm. Key verse, James Chapter 3, verse 10. Our Sunday school classes are as usual. First Fruits with Brother Marquis Brown and Jubilee with Brother Sam Brown are on Zoom at 9 a.m. Redeem with Sister Araminta Peters and Sister Naomi Henry, as well as Victorious with Brother Seymour Bonaire and Brother Erwin Peters are in the sanctuary beginning at 9.45 a.m. Sunday worship service will begin at 11 a.m. in the Sanctuary Zoom and Facebook Live. Next week, Sunday, God's willing, we will have communion service and a benevolence offering will be taken up thereafter. 
important announcements. Monday also, we have the Hour of Power, Monday, April 8th at 7.30 p.m. I already shared that information in the WhatsApp chat, but I will share the link again tomorrow. Homegoing services for Eugene Peters, Saturday, April 13th, 2024, at the Calvary Baptist Church. Viewing will be at 10 a.m., service at 11 a.m. Please continue to keep Brother Newton Peters, Brother Irwin, and the entire Peter family in your prayer during this season of mourning. Faith Wesleyan Holiness Church will be celebrating the 49th anniversary service on Sunday, April 21st, 2024 at 10 a.m. That's 10 a.m. Can you all bring up that um, history nugget for me, please? We had decided the celebration committee that we are going to share a nugget for every Sunday. So the session started at the Dunu community. I'm not sure if everyone can see it. It's kind of pale. So on Sunday, April 20th, 1975, was the inaugural worship service at Dunu Housing Community Center in East End St. Thomas. So it's not 49 years in this sanctuary, but the mission and the worship started April 20th, 1975 in Dunu Housing Community in the East End. That's our history nugget. <laughs> uh, continue to keep in prayer for the 11th Wesleyan Youth Congress in Barbados from July 21st to the 26th. Let's celebrate. On Tuesday, April 9th, 2024, happy birthday goes out to Dr. Don Pant. On Thursday, April 11th, 2024, happy birthday goes out to Sister Randy Griffin. On Saturday, April 13th, 2024, happy birthday goes out to Sister Beulah Jeffers. I believe there was also a family member for the Ralphs that makes birthday this week as well. I was noted. So we're going to sing happy birthday at the count of three. One, two, three. A happy birthday to you. A happy birthday to you. Every day of the year. May you feel Jesus near. A happy birthday to you. A you ever had. Also tomorrow, Monday, eight, the 8th of April, 2024, happy anniversary goes out to Brother Charles and Dr. Don Pont. So we wish you all that are making birthdays a very happy and blessed birthday this week and a happy anniversary to the Pants. God bless you all and have a great week. Praise the Lord. Let us all stand and be dismissed. Pastor, look at just a minute. Um, I bring greeting to you from Brother Newton Peters. He said to tell the church that he is doing well and ask for your prayers. All right. So continue to pray for Brother Newton Peters. Thank you, Sister Pond. He did give me that message, but knowing Pastor Luke, <laughs> he and I spoke uh, yesterday, I think it is. All right. Sister, um, Sister... Sister Reba, would you please dismiss us? Trying to get escape. Please dismiss us with a word of prayer. Prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for bringing us all here today, for bringing us, giving us life this morning to come and hear the word of God and to be kept abreast of what's going on in our world, in our society, and knowing that, Father God, no matter what happens, we can trust in you. You will never change. You have never changed, and you will always be there for us. So we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We love you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.